Hello everybody and welcome back. Next video in this series on codeless application development is going to be covering the Thunkable service. Now before we get started as always please don't forget to like and subscribe and check out the channel for new content. Now before we jump in I do want to give full disclosure I'm not as well versed on this service. Some of this is going to be learning together but I got enough of an overview to essentially explain or show you visually what this service can offer. Uh, why Also why I think this is one of the better services out there for the price. I always specify that. Now, because this is part of a series, I don't just want to cover this as a service. I also want to explain that when it comes to codeless application development, you have low code and you have no code. Now, this being said, some applications uh, will still require you to know logic and flows, which is not necessarily incredibly difficult. For example, you can check out my app guide for tutorial. That's one of the few truly free services as long as you're making under 10 million in revenue. The trade-off is um, number one, you do have to start paying for it if you go over 10 million in revenue. The other part is uh, when you're using services like that, it's, it's a slightly more technical setup. So some services, like if you check out the review for Appy Pie, much more simple interface. However, when you get into services that allow you to design logic and flows, you can make a much more versatile and unique app, as opposed to create a new page and all the buttons are there, you can actually you do a little bit more design work. So you need to figure out how technical you are, how technical you're willing to be by learning, and then also kind of fit the application into your, your arsenal, so to speak. So let's go ahead and get started. And again, don't forget to check out the channel for new content and subscribe so you can get all the video updates as I'm adding new reviews. So jumping straight in, here's the Thunkable homepage. We'll make this a pretty comprehensive review. So first and foremost, you have some pretty good tran um, essentially like transitions or animations up here, walking you through some sample apps like this translator, a voice recording that translates or transcribes your audio to text. And then it talks about how they have every platform natively. So what that means is you can have native Android, iOS, or web applications. Then you have, this part's going to be really important, so drag and drop blocks. This is essentially going to be that logic or flow I was talking about earlier. And this is basically, okay, you added a button. What does it do? This is how you're kind of setting up the action. And then you'll have some additional community of creators. Now, Thunkable appears to be really, really big on this community section. So when you go to community, their idea is, you, and with the, we'll get into the pricing page in a minute, but the idea is your app is public to start, you pay to go private, and they have tons of these different community forums that you can go into, talking about extensions, bugs. I really respect companies that are willing to have a page where you can publicly report bugs. Uh, it just fosters that sense of learning and development and in the coding community, that's huge, to me at least. So you have this community page, and what we'll do is we're going to go ahead and close this. You can review that in your own time if you're interested. They have a blog. And then we're going to go ahead and check out their pricing page. So when you scroll down, first and foremost, a ton of respect for them having a free page. This isn't a freemium or anything like that. This is, uh, I guess in a way it could be considered freemium. But the way that this is set up is you have a free page, 10 public projects, 200 megabyte account storage, Thunkable branded app. So you're getting their branding no frills, but you actually get to try it out. You're not forced to upgrade immediately after you cross over certain thresholds outside of data storage. The idea is try it, make sure you like it, then buy it, instead of kind of being forced into buying it after a couple of days. Now, you have Pro. Annual is almost always going to be default on every single application, but 21 a month is pretty cheap. So you can publish as a mobile web app, unlimited private and public projects, uh, one gig account storage. So I'll be honest, not a ton of data, but if you're not trying to build some social networking app where people are sharing a ton of data, this would still be pretty, uh, pretty usable. Uh, personal app branding. So you're basically not going to have their thunkable branding. Test build publish with pro components like ad mob. So paid ads and then expedited iOS, Android build and publish. So couple of things to note here, as I've been saying in every video, regardless of what service you use, doesn't matter how cheap or expensive it is, you have to pay for an Android and iOS developer account. I've had people in previous comments ask if there's a way around it. 
It's not. It's basically if you want your app to be visible in Google Play, you have to pay Google to publish on their store. That's just how it is. Google is a little bit cheaper. I think it's $25 currently, and that's for the lifetime. I have a Google developer account. I paid 25 bucks once. I have two or three apps posted. Uh, you can check them out. It's If you just look up surface level, uh, there are a couple apps I've been posting throughout this tutorial series. Uh, Apple is $99 a year, if I'm not mistaken. So Premium Pro is going to be expanded 500 meg or 5,000 megabytes of 5 gig of storage, priority support, and then everything in Pro. And then Enterprise, you can learn more uh, by clicking there. They have a couple of different things down here to cover. I didn't find much of it to be incredibly necessary if you're just kind of getting an overview of the service. Now, what does it look like when you're actually logging in? Well, before we do that, I just want to show you, and I'll scroll through super quick because you can find this uh, article on your own. It's in their docs section, but they do have a pretty comprehensive document on how to upload to uh, the iOS app store. It's a little bit more complicated than uploading uh, to Android, but both are still doable through this platform. And then you obviously have that web app as well. So what does the interface look like? Well, I went ahead and signed up with a generic, just my Surface um, essentially username. So when you log in, this is basically what you're going to see. This is the dashboard you're dropped into. You'll see in the top left, you have designer, which is where you're designing the app data, which is imagine your data sources. You have assets, settings, and then tutorials. If you're wanting to create things like login screens, I would check out the stored variables section. I watched a lot of this. I will tell you it's a great video. However, the individual running this video talks incredibly quickly and there's a lot of fast moving, but you can see right here, I'll try to make this full screen um, so it's not available in this mode. So essentially, this is what a logic flow looks like. Very, very complicated. If you're running a dual monitor setup or just switching back and forth, you can figure it out. But essentially, there's a lot of different steps that you need to go through to actually create the logic for a signup page but definitely worth it. And things like that are probably going to be the more complicated elements to an app. But that's just an example of creating and storing variables like usernames and passwords. But they have a couple of different tutorials here. And now we're going to go back to the designer. So we're going to try to make something together, you know, relatively simple. So let's just say, uh, because it's designed to be a drag and drop interface, let's say we want to have something like a label up top. And we just wanna say, this is my app. So this is what the page is actually gonna look like in real time. So essentially you'll have all the things you can change over here. So what's the background color and all the different elements that you can change, but we're gonna keep it, let's, let's just make it kind of like a greenish color. You take UX classes, green has a sense of something along the lines of trust or something like that. Obviously this is kind of more of like a vomit green color, but we'll leave it as is for now. So we're gonna click right here and then we'll click off the screen. So this is my app. You can make adjustments when you select it. You can change everything, font size, color, text alignment, all that fun stuff. We'll leave it as is and just say that I somehow guessed to get it centered well. If you wanted to add in an image, we can drag and drop, put that in here. You can choose your file source. So let's just say you want to type in URL. So let's just go Google happy face. And we will select this. And actually what you can usually do on Google images, we'll right click copy, actually, we may need to open this one directly. Uh, now, when you're using images and publicly posting, make sure that you're aware of the licensing. Oh, there are a lot of Creative Commons websites where you can get free images, but just to be safe. Um, so we're gonna copy image address, we'll go back to Thunkable, we're gonna click on no file source, type in URL, <clears throat> and then we're going to paste in and you'll see here we have the smiley face. So pretty quickly loaded. Um, but again, make sure that you understand the licensing. I'm not going to be responsible if you end up publishing and then uh, end up infringing on some kind of um, like licensing agreement or something like that. So make sure you check out that. Now, <clears throat> next up, we're going to start adding in, uh, let's just say 
This is going to be your login page. You can look up the video tutorial I showed you earlier. I'll give them credit for that and honestly all the work here. Um, but we're going to maybe decide, you know what, we want text input right here. Actually, maybe you decide we don't want that. So we have the ability to delete the element by clicking this trash can, click delete, and it's gone. But we decided, you know what, instead we want a button. And we want this to go to page two. So we're gonna type go to page two, and we will have to resize this. So maybe we want this to be obnoxiously large. So we'll put this button right here. Now, how do you make the next page? Go up here, select this little plus button. It'll create the page side by side. So we're gonna make this page, let's just make it kind of this weird, whatever color you wanna call this, or you can use pre-built colors or preset. So maybe we want to go with this kind of orange color. So we'll select this, and then maybe we decide, you know what, I'm gonna have a label up here, and we're gonna call this page two. So we're gonna say, pretty cool so far. And you'll notice when the text starts to disappear, we have to resize, put it in the middle. And I like that they have some of the UI tools it's not incredibly robust, um, but it at least tells you where the middle of the page is and middle alignment, both on the vertical and horizontal axes. So we have our pretty cool so far. Obviously, you can adjust the text styling to make the box match up and get it a little bit more accurate as far as where the center is. But then we're going to decide, you know what? We need a button to go back to page one. Maybe someone clicked it on accident. And then we're going to make this button a little bit smaller. So we're going to put go back with an exclamation point. And we'll resize, make it a little less obnoxious. And then here we're actually gonna put a frowny face. Not even sure why, but why not? So we're gonna type in frowny face, find one right here. We're gonna right click, copy image address, come back over, and we will drag in the image tool and then picture source, type in URL, but again, you can upload if you need to. That will go against your data storage from my understanding. We'll type this in. Now we have our frowny face go back. Well, now if you wanna do a web preview, you're gonna notice when preview screen one opens, if you click go to page two, nothing happens. The reasoning for that is you haven't set up logic yet. So we're gonna click go back to editing, and then we're going to go to screen one, and essentially what we're going to do is on screen one, we're going to try to figure out how exactly do we make this go to page two. So we're going to go to blocks. Now you'll notice right here, so these blocks by default, so if we click on button one, these are the UI components. So when you click button one, these are the components that are actually in uh, essentially this first page. So we're going to click button one. Well, when button one click, do blank. And nothing's really set. So when we click here, you can drag these elements in. So I deleted that element just to kind of show you what this is gonna look like as is. So we'll click button one, and you have all of these options of what you can mix and match. They're designed to look like puzzle pieces, so you know this how how essentially things will fit together. So as you can see, you can make a ton of different, more complex operations. We're gonna do something pretty basic though. So let's go to control. Let's click navigate. When I click and hold, you'll see that navigate to screen one is automatically an option. We're gonna change this to screen two. So now that this is set up, this will take us to screen two, but we need to remember, well, we have a go back button. So we're gonna go to screen two, and we're gonna click on button two, and we're gonna do the same thing. Go to control, navigate to screen one. We're gonna click and hold on this element. Maybe do that one more time. So we're gonna click here, and you'll see that this navigate to screen one is selected. Pop it into this. Uh, I'll be honest that it doesn't look very good. Almost looks like you're missing something, but this is really all there is to it. So when image two click, do navigate to screen one. Now you'll notice this is for the image and not for the button. I accidentally selected the wrong one. So we just click the delete button on our keyboard. When button two click, do blank. So we're gonna go to control, navigate two. 
and we'll click and drag and we're going to this will stay on your screen so we're going to click button two and you'll notice things are kind of highlighted in the background so button to long click or you can go back to the button and decide you know what we just want to do a regular click so you have your information in the background again so when you click button two you can grab this and put it in wherever you need to. So these are the actions. So the interface is kind of intuitive as you're selecting things. It realizes, well, he clicked this, he clicked this, and he clicked this. And we know he needs to plug this in somewhere. But it does look a little clunky as you're moving through. But for the sake of this, we're just going to do button two, click, screen two. But as you can see, you can grab the logic from the diff, or you can grab the different UI components and connect them to all of these different things. Now, don't get overwhelmed by this. They give you a ton of functionality, but you use what you need. And they have tutorials as well. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go back to design. So we have page one, page two. So let's see what it looks like. So we'll do our web preview. So you'll notice when we click go back, takes us to page one. We click go to page two, takes us to page two. So pretty simple. I know this would be a terrible app, but you could publish this in the App Store if you needed to. Simply by going up here and you can either live test on device, you can share, or download and publish. So at this point we would be able to publish. Uh, you'll probably need to upgrade to do that. And also again with Thunkable, when we go back to the pricing page, uh, you would need to make sure that you're aware that when you're on the free account, these are public projects. So you can do private when you're in a paid tier, not when you're in a free tier. That's kind of how that platform works. If you publish something to the App Store, but you don't want people to be able to take that, then you need to make sure that you go private before you do anything. So that's kind of the general workaround and how everything works here. Again, you have all of these different interfaces, drag and drop, add in what you need, upload or type in URLs for videos. They have the ability to add in animations. You can upload files or type in URLs. Uh, again, make sure that you're aware when you're making these apps of all the licensing agreements and that you have the ability or the right to use whatever it is you're using. But again, I think that this is a really cool service, very intuitive, and I love the fact that this is something that's really affordable. Not only that, but it has a big community if you're trying to just jump straight into a project but you don't really know what you're doing and haven't created an app before, I would recommend trying to develop some patience and actually learn, okay, what am I doing? How do I need this to function? And what do I need it to look like? Because if you go through, publish to the app stores and get everything set up and then realize this wasn't really my vision or maybe the users don't like this feature, it's gonna take a lot more time to rework than it is to do it right the first time around. And the sense of community and having people around you that can kind of help you and guide you is gonna be incredibly helpful. But again, figure out what you need and make it work. So that's kind of my general overview of the service. So if you have any questions, drop them in the comment box below. Again, give this one some thought. At the very least, it's a great place to get started for an affordable rate and get what we call an MVP out there, but it could be fully functional as well. MVP being minimum viable product. That way you can at least test something, play around with it, figure out, could I see myself using this long term before you actually start investing heavily? But again, take a look at this based on their pricing page, study it, see if it's something that kind of meets your needs, and then go from there. Drop your questions in the comment box below. I'm happy to help. If you want a review of any other services, feel free to let me know and I'll do what I can, and I'll see you all in the next video.